Why do you play Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, and No Man's Sky? Well, for me, each of these games bring me closer to my dream of exploring space. All of them revolve around space and all of them scratch a totally different niche or need that I have when playing these types of games. Before we talk about each individual game, let's talk about some of their similarities. You can amass a large amount of wealth in order to progress. In their own way, each game produces breathtaking space exploration moments while you're inside ships or even on foot exploring planets and moons. They all also share an element of danger that I need in order to keep me interested in playing. When you play together with friends, gameplay elements and fun are taken to exceptionally glorious levels of enjoyment. Elite Dangerous in its current state with Odyssey scratches the most itches for me right now. I can explore our Milky Way galaxy inside my ships, my SRV, or on foot. Even though Elite Dangerous has often been described as a massive pool that is only a few inches deep, well, that might be true from a certain point of view, but Elite does not hold your hand in any way. It is up to you, the commander, to forge your own gameplay path. Elite offers glorious visuals, amazing on foot and space combat, the ability to discover strange unique life forms, as well as the ability to run into multiple alien races. In a nutshell, Elite Dangerous Odyssey fulfills so many of the itches that need to be scratched when I play a space type game. Like the other two games, Elite gives me the ability to earn a massive fortune to help me progress, to buy new ships and weapons which help me further to progress. The thing is, just about the entire game loop of Elite Dangerous revolves around what commanders call the grind. You might argue that exploration in Elite Dangerous can be done without a lot of the engineering grind. There is truth to this, but exploration, much like any profession, can be done much better after doing the progression process that is the grind of Elite. I won't split hairs with you. The main thing that keeps you playing is the grind of upgrading your ships, suits, and weapons, mixed in with the amazing views of our galaxy. That's about it. If you're into PvP, on foot or in ships, then Elite Dangerous is the game for you. Playing in open gives commanders the ability to run into each other. Once they do, it is up to them on how the encounter unfolds. They could become lifelong buddies or mortal enemies. It all depends on their choices at that exact moment, and I love that. Elite Dangerous offers you glorious combat, the ability to be a space bajillionaire with equally glorious space visuals. It brings me very close to sometimes feeling I am in that moment of my dream, reaching for the stars. Now let's talk about why I love to play Star Citizen even in its current alpha state. Simply put, Star Citizen brings you as close to reality as possible when it comes to space simulators. When running well, this game is amazing. What makes it even better is the ability to play with friends in an always open and possibly dangerous environment. There are no private groups or solo servers. When you play Star Citizen, you always run the risk of bumping into other players exploring the verse. Much like Elite, Star Citizen offers the player a sort of MMO environment where their choices determine their future. It can be helpful and friendly, or that meeting can end in tragedy with death. Each player shapes their own future with each decision they make. Eventually those decisions turn into players interacting with each other to shape their current future. The other thing I absolutely love about Star Citizen is the ability to fully explore my ship's interiors. I mean, come on, who doesn't love that? As well as modify my ships with better modules that actually affect just how when my ship performs. On top of that, I can even play with overclocking my modules to make my ships perform even better, although that's probably going to change in 3.14, but hey! Hands down, the biggest reasons why I play Star Citizen besides the epic multiplayer possibilities are for the ship interiors. In itself, ship interiors add an almost uncountable number of gameplay possibilities. Ship interiors are totally glorious, and that is an understatement. Add in an element of, oh no, I'm getting attacked. It's a good thing I powered down my engines but left my systems online, keeping my shields fully charged. Now I just gotta run in through my ship, 
get into my pilot's chair, activate my engines, then lift off. From there, it's either fight or flight. God, I love it. That is just one situation where running through your ship is both exciting as well as scary. When you have a ship interior that fully reacts to physical damage, the experience is beyond glorious. Hands down, ship interiors add more reality to my gaming experience. Even during the mundane tasks like selling goods at a major spaceport or tracking down modules, suits, or weapons, the reality of having a ship interior to walk in with other people under any circumstances or situation sets this game apart from the rest. Make no mistakes, these ship interiors inside and out look freaking amazing. Most, if not all, the money raised during this game's development has revolved around extensively detailed ships and their interiors. Every single element of this game revolves around just how glorious the ships are, as well as how they function inside the game. Star Citizen easily brings me the closest to realizing my dream in the most realistic gameplay possible, especially when played with friends. Planets, moons, cities, and outposts look freaking glorious. No matter where you go in the Stanton system, you are definitely going to be immersed into captivating, beautiful gameplay. If you love realistic space gaming experience, then this is the game for you. Well, uh, you know, when the game actually runs right and isn't crapped up by a bunch of buggy gameplay, then well, it's no fun at all really. Now, No Man's Sky is truly my first space love. Well, you know, besides maybe asteroids or something. This game helped me reach for the stars, build huge bases on faraway planets and moons, discover strange new life, explore caves, do all kinds of quest lines. This game scratches so many space itches for me, it's freaking ridiculous. Much like Elite Dangerous Odyssey, No Man's Sky had a very rocky start at launch due to a release date that was rushed. After all these years and tons of updates later, No Man's Sky has made a legendary comeback of epic proportions. With each and every update, Sean and his team brought us closer to his vision. The last update we received was a graphical update called Prisms which took the eye candy of No Man's Sky to the next freaking level. A few days ago, I played No Man's Sky for six hours straight and freaking fell in love with the game again. Everything looked so much better than I remembered. Although the game is still kind of cartoony looking, it looks more realistic now than ever before. The more real you can make my experience, the better, as it brings me closer to my dream of feeling like I'm actually there in the moment on some far-flung planet. If you like the idea of having a space game hold your hand when you're a new player through quests, which also teach you gameplay as well as game lore, then No Man's Sky is for you. The other glorious thing is you can decide to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. In a way, No Man's Sky can be best described as a space honey badger simulator where you create your gameplay each time you log in. Well, you know, except for the very beginning of the game where you've got to get into your newbie ship and get it all sorted, other than that, that's when Space Honey Badger begins. When I play No Man's Sky, I get lost in hours upon hours of gameplay where I am sucked in so much I lose track of time. This is how immersive No Man's Sky can be. No matter what type of gameplay you decide to do, this game will make you feel like you have literally been abducted by actual real aliens. Because you will experience many episodes of lost time due to extremely immersive gameplay sessions. If you want to tame animals to make them your pets, well, you can do that. How about exploring the surfaces of planets in ground-based vehicles? Well, you can do that too. You can even get yourself a freighter and hire a huge armada of frigates to do your bidding on missions. Heck, you can even walk around in a freaking mech suit. This game has so many gameplay possibilities. I love it. Basically, you can spend a lot of time amassing a huge pile of money in nanites or even tracking down the perfect ship or multi-tool weapon skin that fits your space desires. And if it's not the best S-Class you can find, well, you can just upgrade it to the best because you love the skin. The sheer volume of things you can do in this game is almost uncountable. 
Much like the amount of celestial bodies that are currently in No Man's Sky, couple that with the ability to experience the game with friends, then it transcends to near godlike level of gameplay, filled with shenanigans. The only drawback is that there is a PvP switch. Player versus player is a choice in No Man's Sky, which I almost don't understand as you already have the choice to turn off the ability for other people to join your sessions. But hey, what do I know really? One thing I do know is I love each of these games for similar reasons as well as the differences they have. Each one of these games has in their own way helped me reach for the stars. Some of those experiences I will take to my grave as they were so memorable they can't possibly be forgotten. If you were ever on the fence about playing Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, or No Man's Sky, I highly recommend you give them a try. I might recommend you hold off on buying Elite Dangerous Odyssey DLC until the console is released, but other than that, you will definitely get lost in these games for sure. Each of them will offer you a great community of people to play with, and in each community there are content creators on YouTube with Discord channels to help you answer your burning questions. If you love space games, then chances are you're going to love Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, and No Man's Sky, just like I do. All my love to my Patreons, YouTube channel supporters, and Discord channel boosters. I love you guys.